All right, it is four o'clock. I will call the plan commission to order. Call the roll. Mayor Sorensen is present. Other person Mitchell is excused. Ryan Sazma, Here. Jerry Jones, Here. Marilyn Montemayor, Here. Dave Hoffman, Here. John Matishka. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Everyone in attendance, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, approval of the minutes from July 13th. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Minutes approved. All right, so we'll jump into 3.1, uh, application for conditional use with exceptions for logic design and architecture, Inc. to construct and operate a Starbucks coffee shop and drive through uh, at 2108 North Avenue. Steve? All right, thanks, Mayor. Um, Adam Stein is here and Mark Seidel, um, who are working on behalf of Starbucks and uh, you guys are will be familiar with the site. Recently, we are dealing with the cousins on this property. And as you take a look at the site plans, you'll be able to see the cousins on the um, east side of the site. And then you see the Starbucks, which is in between uh, the cousins and the auto zone. So that is uh, presently a green space. And so Starbucks has identified this site as a new opportunity in the city of Sheboygan. The, uh, the proposed redevelopment would include a, about a 2,200 square foot Starbucks with a full service drive through and 250 square foot seasonal outdoor patio. Starbucks anticipates about 25 to 30 full and part-time employees. Typically, typical operating hours are 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, and that can vary from time to time on weekends. Uh, the proposal includes development of the vacant par parcel. Uh, the existing lot will be divided into two parcels, and the westerly half is the Starbucks project and is identified on the site plan uh, as lot one. Um, Starbucks is anticipating construction start in the fall of 2021 with completion in late spring. Craig Care goes into selecting sites for Starbucks after market has been identified. They must provide ample parking and drive through queuing to optimize guest experience. The added bypass lane further improves site circulation and drive through efficiency in this area. Uh, current access to North Avenue on Cousins property uh, to the west will be eliminated and a new shared access for both Starbucks and Cousins will be constructed on the Starbucks site. Um, the restaurant again is 2,200 square feet. There's approximately 26 parking spaces on the site. The existing driveway connection to North 21st Street will be modified to act as a shared driveway for Starbucks and Cousins. There would be a cross access easement recorded between the property to the east and west, allowing uh, a connection to all of these properties in this area. So the auto zone, the Starbucks, and the Cousins will share an access along their frontages of North Avenue and Calumet Drive. Again, uh, we've talked about the parcel split um, and the most important aspect of the parcel split is just that elimination of that driveway and the creation of that new shared driveway. And on that CSM, there was a, a shared access agreement. Um, and basically what they're doing is eliminating the two separate driveways for each and now we'll have that one shared. And we thought uh, from a staff perspective as well as the applicant um, that this is a good thing in that section of North Avenue where there are uh, a number of uh, turning movements and this, uh, this proposal certainly tries to make it safer and more efficient from an ingress egress perspective. Um, Starbucks lot will be sharing a storm drainage facility with a multi-tenant facility to the west. If you look on the north side of the site plan along Shedder Avenue, that's an area that was previously uh, created for the auto zone for um, storm drain drainage purposes. The auto zone and the Starbucks um, will create a, a document, uh, an easement document that will allow them to share that facility. Um, in addition, could you could you move down one uh, slide? Yeah. 
Um, if you take a look at the landscaping along Shedder Avenue, you can see that a lot of the traffic that'll be heading into the Starbucks heads north and faces along Shedder Avenue. It's a residential neighborhood with several houses on that section of block. And so all those lights that would go through that drive through would be facing there. And if you take a look at the landscape plan, you can see that they're uh, heavily landscaping that north property line to help eliminate some of those vehicle lights into the house. So that was a good use of the landscaping both from a site perspective and to mitigate some of the light impact on those homes. Um, applicant does show a, a 52 square foot internally lit monument sign near the driveway along North Avenue. There are some general uh, information about wall signage on the building, but they will need to come back at a later date and submit the, the sign permits for the site. Plan Commission may want the applicant to explain the following, just a, a explanation of drive through business and access to North Avenue. Uh, thoughts on building signage, I think you can see some of that explanation of the patio and when it is construction to begin and, and when it might it open. I think we touched on that a little bit. Um, applicant is requesting the following variance. One is to have a zero foot paving uh, setback on that west property line. And again, that one is to allow for that shared access in order to eliminate uh, the two drives and create one shared drive. And then requesting a variance from the locational landscaping requirements. Um, just in case they can't meet any of the requirements, they wanted the opportunity to be able to put those points elsewhere. So staff was recommending approval of the proposal subject to the conditions you have before you. I can answer any questions and the applicants are here. Gentlemen, did you have any other additional comments that you'd like to add? Steve does a wonderful job. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Thanks. Dave? Okay, uh, knowing that corner very well, and also knowing the traffic generated at 14th and Erie, uh, I'm looking at this plan and I do have a little concern with making a left turn coming out of that driveway. Um, that's kind of, that's even tough sometimes going from 21st and making a left turn. Uh, do you think that that should be right turn only? I, I don't know anything about traffic counts there, but I would think that would be a bit concerning in that area. Who wants, you guys want to respond? Uh, Mark Seidel, Pinnacle Engineering Group, 20725 Watertown Road in Brookfield. So um, one of the first things we looked at when we were looking at the site for development, we worked with the city engineer to try to understand the number of conflict points at that intersection. How can we actually reduce that and make this better for not only Starbucks, but for everyone in that area? Um, one of the ideas that we did look at was, you know, is it a right turn only, right turn in, right turn out? And we kind of looked at the existing pavement markings and the signage along north, and we came to the kind of the conclusion that, yeah, there is a decent amount of traffic queuing at the intersection as is that'll probably block some of that left-hand turn coming out. So we would like to have that cross access through Cousins so that we can have more traffic go on to 21st Street to a more controlled intersection. So. We, we have been looking at this from the beginning with the city engineer, and I think we actually found a decent you know, resolution to this by closing off the one access point and trying to make it better for everybody. Thank you. Hopefully. Jerry, did you have a comment? Yeah, along the same lines, it, you guys have a fantastic brain. You do a good job looking at your sites. The 14th and Erie uh, and on, the, on Washington Avenue, the queuing always concerns me because we talk about, oh, you know, we have enough room. 14th and Erie, there's not enough room. I mean, we have cars coming out into the road consistently, and that really can't happen on this road. We just can't have that kind of backup coming out into North Avenue being such a busy road. When you're looking at the sites, how many cars do you plan for in a queue, um, and how, how do you alleviate that problem if it, if it becomes something of an issue? Because you have two very high traffic businesses next to you, is next to you as well, in AutoZone and Cousins coming as well. So, as I say, I'm going to turn that to, to him <laughs> for the first part, at least. Um, Adam Stein, I'm Architect of Logic. Uh, so we do a lot of projects with Starbucks. Um, they have their drive throughs kind of down to an art form. Um, so, uh, like a year ago, it was always putting the, the order board on car number six. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, we, and all the projects that we work on with them, uh, order board has gone to number seven now. Um, that's where they've shown is basically the, the most efficiency from the point of order to the amount of time it takes to make the, the beverages, the drinks, get the food ready, and then to be able to deliver it at the window to keep the most even flow. Mm -hmm. um, in the, so I don't work directly for Starbucks, I work for the developers doing the shells of these, um, but we work really close with Starbucks. Um, 
And as they, as we kind of put site plans together like this, um, their like wish list is make sure the order board's on number seven, make sure you have, you know, multiple number of queue cars after that. Here we probably have 10 additional cars that could go through the parking lot mm -hmm. um, to get a bypass lane in because it's what'll start happening is as cars are queuing, they'll queue over to the far left. We're intentionally moving the mobile online purchase uh, parking spots further south on the site so those stay accessible. And then also traffic can always flow all the way around. Um, they'll also be identifying uh, parking stalls in the front of the drive through so that if um, like they have a series of timers basically that are in their drive through to be able to watch how traffic is being controlled. If somebody's slowing them down, it allows them to push a car forward past the patio into the front parking spots and then deliver it out there to keep the drive through flowing. Yeah, so, that, was, that was one of my other follow-up questions that was on mobile ordering. The cars coming in that aren't in the line, where do they go and how do they get in and out? Yeah, right, right now they have them, they have everybody run in to get the drinks. Um, like if you do a mobile online purchase mm -hmm. at Starbucks, it'll essentially just be sitting there for you when you walk in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure some people probably do go through the drive through still, but um, that's kind of where, it's my understanding that's where they've kind of found all of their efficiencies on it. So compared to, uh, I mean, this is, we probably have a dozen Starbucks designs uh, in progress right now at different stages. Um, this one probably has the longest queue line. Uh, I, I don't know what street it was on, but as I was coming here yesterday for the ARB meeting, I stopped at that Starbucks and uh, yeah, it's alarmingly short. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I don't anticipate any issues with this one at all. It's, if anything, they're gonna back up their own traffic. Okay. Right? They'd have to be like, like 16 or 17 cars deep before they're impacting any of the cross access, so. Great, thank I you, I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you, Mayor. Uh, I think Ryan, at first. Yeah, I just wanna tell the commission, we, we, we had the discussions already with the developer, and this site is a, is a lot different than the one on 14th and uh, uh, 14th Street in, by, by Kiwanis Park. So I, I'm, not, I'm not really concerned too much about the stacking going on the North Avenue, because you have such a long queue area, so it'll work. <clears throat> Chad? So I think the only concern is really the parking on the east side of the building. So if you park on the east side of the building and the cars start queuing for the drive through, how long is it gonna take you to get out of those stalls? So the moral of the story is, is park on the south side of the lot versus the east side of the building so you don't have to wait for the cars in the drive through Yep. <laughs> yeah, if you, we've, a lot of these sites we've done traffic studies on. So yeah, it's that, uh, if you figure out where like the 12th car is, that's where it'll hit during peak, so. Don't park past that during peak times. <laughs> Additional questions from commissioners? Motions? Make a motion to approve along with the staff recommendation. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Your votes aye. That's approved. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. RO number 3921-22 and GO number 11 21 22 by older persons Decker amending the city's future land use map of the city of Sheboygan comprehensive plan to change the land use classification of the property located at 530 and 532 South 14th Street from class neighborhood preservation to class neighborhood mixed use classification. Steve. All right, thanks, Mayor. Um, I'm just going to go through the staff report once. It's for the next two items. Sounds good. Um, so what we're taking a look at, uh, Chong Kimua is here today and owns the property at 530 and 532 South 14th Street. Um, and as the mayor has indicated, uh, the property owner is looking to change the land use classification from class neighborhood preservation to neighborhood uh, class neighborhood mixed use in the comprehensive plan, and then to rezone the property from uh, neighborhood residential to uh, neighborhood commercial. And the reason being is that you can see from the pictures of the uh, property owner's site that this has been a commercial building for decades. And, um, and so what happens is right now the neighborhood residential zone is a zone that permits one and two family uses. And so uh, the commercial use there is what's considered a legal non-conforming use. Legal because it's been there for many years, non-conforming because if you want to do something commercially today, you wouldn't be able to do it. So, so Mr. Mua has had a number of different people who wanted to go into the site 
but have not wanted to go through the process required to get an approval to operate from the site. So one of the things uh, we had discussed was the idea of possibly changing it from that neighborhood residential to the neighborhood commercial so that uh, people could apply for a conditional use permit or if a, a retail use was in there and it was Chad's retail and now it's going to be Steve's retail, they could just simply make those changes without having to go to the City of Sheboygan Board of Appeals every single time there was a change. And as you guys can see, like I said, from a building perspective, it's been used commercially for many years. There is an apartment about three quarters of the building is commercial and there is a living unit on the west quarter of the building. So there is, it's kind of a mixed use facility with that apartment in the commercial space. So um, basically uh, there's a number of uh, uh, ways of meeting the comprehensive plan. It allows for infill development and it supports mixed use development projects integrating residential and non-residential uses and encourages redevelopment and infill development and that neighborhood commercial zone is identified as the most appropriate zoning for this facility along this property and that neighborhood commercial zone would be consistent with that mixed uh, central mixed use zone. So basically what you're looking at today is the applicant is just looking to change the zoning and comprehensive plan map uh, 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 designations so that it is more in a compliance situation than a non-conforming situation. So staff was recommending approval of both the comprehensive plan designation change as well as the rezone. And the applicant is here as well. Any additional things to add? Yes. Um, um, my name is Onky Moore and uh, 532 and 530 and 14th Street. And um, I work business in there for many years. But uh, right now I retire, so I want to rent to somebody else. But uh, I want to rezone on that area, so my property, so I uh, can grow the business for me and for the city. So that's all I know. All right, thank you. Questions from commissioners? Is there a motion to approve? I make the motion to approve sub to staff recommendation. Second. Motion and second. Further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Same with 3.3. .3. Is there a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendation. Second. It's been a motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thank you. All right, next meeting, August 10th. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. <laughs> Is there it's been a motion and second? All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? We're adjourned at 418. All right. Thanks, everybody.